Why? Why did Jesus come to earth? Why forsake the majesty and fellowship of heaven? Exchanging a palace for a stable. Immortal comforts for a feeding trough. And robes of glory for the feeble body of an infant. An unparalleled irony, this supreme, unrivaled nobility experiencing absolute and total humility. Our sovereign God, Emmanuel, as a baby. He didn't come to heap shame upon sinners or to judge and cast out the impious, but to break bread with those called unrighteous. He didn't come to illuminate every mystery of the cosmos or to enlighten the intellectual, but to fulfill the testimony of prophets clothed in rags. He didn't come to elevate a single nation or to advocate a particular political affiliation. He came because he saw you broken in need of salvation. He saw you lost and abandoned crying out, surrounded by deaf ears, fighting through the tears, but beaten down by the torments of this world. And unable to bear your distress, he renounced his eternal throne, walked the earth, bore the stripes, accepted the nails, and gave up his last breath, so that you could receive the breath of life. holy, infinite God, beheld your pain, perceived your heart, and determined that your soul was worth dying for. From the manger, to the cross, to the empty tomb, it is all a story of profound love, of a savior who rescued his children from darkness, of a blameless king who declared that no sacrifice was too great for the sake of his beloved creation. Why did Jesus come to earth? He came for you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, because of you, amen because of you and me. Come on, can we say that? Can we say, Jesus came because of you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God is so good. We had an amazing night uh, this past Friday night at the Christmas party on ice. Come on, the youth, uh, nobody fell. Praise God, except Michaela. She's not here right now. I think she's recovering, uh, but <laughs> she's okay. Everybody was, everybody was okay, and we had so much fun, and other people got involved. I loved it. Other people got involved that was outside of our church, and we, when we take the church out, some people get interested because they see what we're doing, so they got, you know, they got to participate, so it was a lot of fun, um, but we have even more coming up. So the 19th, say the 19th. The 19th, are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. We have one more week, one more week to the Christmas play that we have coming on. It's going to be so much fun. All right, it's going to be an amazing time. How much fun is it? That much fun. It's going to be that much. You have to be here to find out how much fun it's going to be. But invite someone, please. Like Pastor said, make sure you're inviting your friends and family. Bring them out here. It's going to be an awesome time. We have some camels. We have some wise men. All right, we have some uh, everything in between that. Okay, but please be here for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, and then also the, what, the chilly night. That's going to be coming up now. What, New Year? New Year's. Come on, chilly is coming up. There's only one person who's excited. Come on, we're having chili on chili night. Amen. All right. Come on, New Year's chili night is going to be here. All right, get excited. We're going to have more than just chili, right? We're going to have some sides. Bring some sides. Bring some food to come with it. All right, and if you have the best chili, who has the best chili? Raise your hand if you have the best chili. All right, thank you so much. God bless you. All right, Mike, get that chili here. Okay, we need to have the best chili in the house. So if you can be pastor, say yes, we're going to be pastor this year. All right, then yes, you're going to bring the best chili and bring a friend with you so you can share in that. It's going to be so good. I am excited. Are you excited, pastor? You excited to lose this year? Yeah. <laughs> I know God is good. So come on. Can we give it up for Pastor and the word that God is going to bring today? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Fabio. Amen. And uh, I used to ice skate. <laughs> I would not dare do it now. 
Um, and I praise the Lord, no one was injured yesterday, and God was there. And uh, thank you, parents, for trusting uh, and going. Some of your parents went. What a wonderful time, amen? And uh, as Pastor Fabio was sharing, just, you know, the end of this year is approaching. How many of you are looking forward to 2022? Can somebody say amen? Amen. It's going to be a phenomenal year. Uh, no matter what happens, God is still God, and we're going to trust him just like we're doing this year. And uh, we're going to hold on to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, there are times when, when God shows up unexpectedly. How many of you love those moments when God shows up unexpectedly? And um, how many of you experience those moments? I, I remember uh, uh, last Wednesday night, some of you didn't hear the testimony, but uh, Sister Marilyn wasn't feeling well. And, and some of you know that she was healed of cancer a couple years ago. And of course, what does the enemy do? He puts something in your head that says the cancer has come back. And that was probably what was making you ill in your body, worrying my sister. Let me tell you something. Whose report are we going to believe? Hey, 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 hey. She went to the doctor. The doctor ran a whole panel of tests, and the doctor came back and said, Guess what? You have no cancer. Can somebody say amen? How many of you are glad when God does something unexpectedly? And, you know, and I can tell you in our lives, God does that, especially in the Scripture. You know, I'm a pastor, I preach the Word of God, and I've read the Bible through many, many times. But there's sometimes God wants to show you something. Say, God, show me something. God, show me something. Amen. And uh, the Lord did that this week for me. I was, I was seeking the Lord, praying. I'm, I'm, I've, uh, some of you know I, I, my knee is kind of messed up right now, so I'm, I'm waiting. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Um, but, you know, I've had a lot of time to seek the Lord and pray and read the Word. And uh, just say, Lord, give me a fresh anointing. Amen? Give me a fresh anointing. Sometimes God's got to slow you down a little bit. Amen. So there are times when God shows up unexpectedly. And God did that this week. I look out this morning, and I see people here that you've been hiding your wounds. You've been hiding your scars. You, you've, been, you've been, you know, living... I don't want to say living a lie, but you, 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 you're, kind of, you're covering up things that were never meant to be covered up. Because it's your testimony. And see, the enemy wants to put things upon us where, you know, things have happened in our life that we, that, that, that we want to not talk about. It bothers people. The enemy will tell you, don't talk about it. But God brought you through it. And so, these things in our life, these wounds, these Scars, they're a testimony of how the Lord uses them, uses them to set the captives free. And the Lord's been teaching me this, and, and the Lord took me to a passage of Scripture, which I'm going to read in just a moment. But Satan knows, listen to me, the enemy knows that there is a supernatural power behind each and every one of our scars as a child of God. Nothing takes God by accident. Your hurt, your pain, your suffering did not surprise God. And Satan will try to use that against you where you will hide those things and try to live life like everything is okay when it's really not. He knows there's a supernatural power behind each and every one of our scars. And see, these are the reasons, and that reason is what will destroy him. That reason is what will, what will push away every attack that he comes at you with. Because you are displaying the mercy and the glory of God at the same time. Because God has delivered you. For you are in this room today. You have breath in your body and you have a heartbeat because God has delivered you. And I'm telling you today, it's time that we stop listening to what the enemy wants to tell us about our past and our heartache and our heartbreak and, our, and the things that have happened to us and to realize that those scars are meant to be displayed. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they have, over, they have conquered him, overcome, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their what? Testimony. And the Lord's been showing me this week that I have a testimony. As much as it hurts, as much as we don't understand and I don't understand, we have a testimony. And those scars need to be displayed for the world to see because my God is faithful. My God hasn't forsaken nor forgotten us. 
and we're going to continue to walk with him and to trust in him. Open your Bibles to John chapter 20, verse 24 this morning. This is a scripture the Lord opened my eyes up to this week, and I've never seen it like this before. And how many of you say, thank you, God, for the unexpected? John 20, 24 through 27 tells us, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the others, other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's a strong statement. Unless I put my finger in the hole in his hand and my fist in his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Although the doors were locked, listen to what's happening here. This is supernatural. This is God. The doors were locked, yet Jesus was among them. And he said to them, peace be with you. And he turns and looks at Thomas. Remember what Thomas said, I will not, I will never believe unless I do this. What is the heart of your God? See, some of us, if, if we were Jesus, and we're not, but we, we would sit there and we'd say, well, if they're not going to believe, you know, I'm not going to worry about them. I'm just going to do my thing. But Jesus cares about everybody. Jesus cares about every soul. Jesus knows every tear, every hair, amount of hair on your head. He has it numbered. Amen? And Jesus cares about Thomas. And Jesus appears miraculously in the midst of them. He says, he turns and looks at Thomas and says, put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Verse 28, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. At that moment, the eyes of Thomas were opened. He was a believer in the Son of the living God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the, your Holy Spirit in this, in a, with us today. And Lord, I just ask and I pray right now, Father, that these words today would penetrate our hearts and those watching online right now, or you would just touch them with this word and change them. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I've injured myself multiple times in my childhood, and some, some, some in my adult, I've sliced through my, my knee with a knife uh, all the way to the kneecap, my right knee, and I've uh, been Chinese star, it was thrown at me one time across a field and stuck in the back of my leg, got a scar from that, uh, been punctured with um, palm fronds that were made into swords uh, as we, we used to play, and different things we would make. Anybody ever see Rambo? You, you remember, you remember the, the, the scene where they take the, the stick and they bring it back and they put all these spikes on it and they, so if you, have a, you trip it, it comes and hits you? Yeah, we've done that too. Um, listen, when I played, I played serious. You know, we used to, you know so I, I've got scars and, you know, and, and never once did I ever go to somebody and say, here, put your finger inside this hole. I mean, have you done that? Usually you're, 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 you're like grossing people out. You don't want anybody to see that mess. You, you know, you want to get to the doctor as soon as you can. You've lost enough blood. You know, and, and so Thomas is like, I, will, I want to put my finger in there. I want to put my hand. Now, listen, that takes a lot of guts, right? I mean, think about that. He sincerely wanted to believe that Jesus was the Son of God and he was alive. He was willing to go over and above. To know that Jesus is alive. I look out today and I look at our world today and there's people that are playing church and they're watching church and they're, they, but they have yet to realize they are the church because they have yet to believe that Jesus is truly alive. What will you do 
And what will you ask of Jesus to prove to you that he is alive? Well, oh, pastor, we should just believe by faith. No. You will. But I believe the heart of Christ is for everyone to know that he is the son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the, my Lord and my God. And if you need something from him, you ask him and he will reveal it to you. And you will believe and you will know that he is God. You will not doubt that he is God. Because Jesus wants you to know him like he did Thomas. There is no denying that the pain that Jesus endured on the cross for those who would believe. There is no denying that Jesus died on the cross. There is no denying that Jesus was resurrected on the third day. There was no denying that Jesus was born in a manger. But yet people have a hard time believing. And then we have the Christians of the world. And How many of you are one? Come you raise your hand. Amen. You're a believer. You love the Lord. Amen. Somehow the Lord, and let me just say this. The Lord revealed himself to me in a special way. No, I did not put my finger in his hand, in a, my hand, my fist in his side, but he revealed himself to me in a special way. And one day, if you want to know, I'll tell you. But God loved me so much, he made it possible that I would believe in him. And his desire is that the world believe in him. But I, I'm telling you, I believe that today the church, the Christian, the body of Christ needs to have some sort of a, 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 a take a risk here and, and say, listen, I want to share with you how Jesus revealed himself to me. Maybe you're here today and Jesus never has revealed himself to you like I'm preaching today. He will if you pray and ask him to. He wants to change our lives. He wants to heal you and set you free. And there's no doubt what Jesus did on that cross. And, and listen, he didn't have to show Thomas his scars. He didn't have to show, but he loved him enough to do that. He is still God, amen? He is still Jesus, whether he did that or not. But the love of God compels people to come to him. That's his heart. A pain so great, as Christ is on that cross, it left scars for the world to see. I want you to think about something just for a moment. A pain so great that it left scars on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that the world would see. That's evidence. That's proof. A pain so great that it left scars for the world to see. And, and I'm telling you, and I believe this with my heart, that the greatest defeat that we can encounter with the enemy is keeping them hidden from the ones who are desperately looking for a Savior. And I've read this passage of Scripture, and, I, and, I, and I, I've, I've meditated on it, and I've preached it different ways, but the Lord began to show me as I was studying this week, the, the, the question came to me, what about your scars? Because you don't see the tears. You don't hear the questions, why? You don't hear me punch my fist upon a table and say, God, why? But God looks at me, this week and says, what about your scars? Who sees them? And the Lord began to show me something in this scripture, and it, it comes from this statement here that the greatest defeat that we can have, I can have, is keeping the scars hidden from the ones who are desperately looking for a Savior. People are watching your life. And they're not looking for perfection, they're looking for Jesus. And Jesus had scars Jesus was bruised. Jesus was crucified. Jesus shed his blood. And all of a sudden the world is looking, show me your scars. And prove that he is risen. And prove that he was born. Scars remain as a testimony to reveal to others the faithfulness of God. Scars remain on me as a testimony to reveal to others the faithfulness of God. As much as I would like to change the past, can somebody say amen? As much as I would like to change the pain, I cannot forget about his promise. And beloved, this morning I want to encourage you, don't forget about his promise. Some of us have kept our scars hidden. We, you know, we, we keep it pushed away, pushed aside, covered up, but the world as a child of God needs to see what you have and you need to bear it to them and say, look how faithful my God has been. 
Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Why would, why would the writer of Hebrews even say that? Because of the pain. Because of the hurt. Because of the loss. All these reasons is why. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we pro profess. For he who promised is what? Is faithful. My God is faithful. He is faithful. And nothing took God by accident. And in the midst of the pain, we have the promise. And what the Lord is showing us in this scripture, as he showed Thomas, he says, show them your scars, and they will see the faithfulness of God. Quit being a hypocrite. Mm. People know you're hurting. Your family knows you're hurt. Your family knows the things that you go through. And they know you go to church. They know you put your praise on, you know, and they know how you sing and you worship. But somehow when you get home, guess what? The wounds begin to show. Is that not the truth? Turn those wounds and turn those scars into a testimony. Because they know you've been hurt. And begin to declare the promises of God and the faithfulness of God. Begin to minister to other people and share with them just what God did. Romans 8, 38, 39. You love this scripture. I know you do. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Where's the love of God found? In Christ Jesus our Lord. So when, when, you, when you look at this scripture, nothing, I'm, are you convinced? See, I'm convinced that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Nothing. Not the death of my dearest loved ones. Not sickness. Not rejection. Not shame. Not, nothing can separate me from the love of God. But look at the key here. From the love of Christ, God, that it is where in it's positioned in Christ. Who showed himself to Thomas? It was Jesus. Who said, put your hand in here? It was Jesus. And Jesus does that for us today. Jesus does that through us today. Could it be that the very scars we bear are meant for others? Absolutely. See, that when God said, show, when God said, what about your scars, Jeff? You're looking at mine here, but what about yours? For you were made in my image. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was crucified. Jesus died. Jesus rose again, and he still had the scars as a testimony. As a testimony. And, and the fact that I don't understand, and, and, I, and I question things, but listen, God's promise is there, and God is faithful, and I will not shrink back. I will continue to trust him. Because my scars are meant for others to see how faithful my God is. See, that's God. And that's how we should live our lives as believers, because you have scars too. Joseph said in Genesis 50, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. God, hmm. He's so good. Yes, he is. He's so good. Yes, he is. Well, the enemy meant for evil. God turned it around. Yes. Trying to push people out. Trying to stop ministries and, 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 and quench the spirit, that quench the anointing in your life. And, you know, yes, COVID came. COVID's still here. But yet we are not going to shrink back. We need to reinstate some ministries in the church and get people back to the, doing the business of the Lord. Say, look at my scars. Quit hiding. Quit hiding. It's time to come out and shine the light of Christ for the world to see. It's the scars that testify of his faithfulness. 
It's my scars that testify of his goodness. It's your scars that testify of his faithfulness, of his goodness, and, what, and look what the Lord has done. Now, it makes no sense in our emotional economy. It makes no sense in our, in our, in our human nature. But to understand that God is good and God is sovereign and God is in control brings me a peace in my spirit that I can trust him. For the scars testify of his faithfulness. The scars you bear may be the result of sin in your life. Oh, Pastor, you, you, you don't. You, the scars you bear may be the result of sin in your life. Christians, listen to me. Sin is a choice you make after conversion, after you're born again. You choose to sin. And sometimes in the midst of sin, God will reveal something to you. But let me tell you, the Lord's coming back for a church who's, who's pure and, and without spot or wrinkle. And, I, and I'm telling you that we need to start to walk in the anointing that God called us to walk in, the anointing of that purity. And, and, and see, I, I know people who've been hurt. I know people who have scars and wounds, and those scars and wounds have driven them away from God. I could have been that person. I could have been that person because there was a moment in my life not too long ago where I said, how can I preach on faith and preach on healing? And yet my own daughter wasn't healed. But she was the way God wanted her healed. And God says, show them your scars and walk in my promises. And you're going to see what this God can do. See, that's the God that we serve. There's some that bear the result, bear scars and wounds because of sin, maybe sickness, or maybe the death of your own loved one. Maybe it was words that were spoken to you. Maybe someone shamed you or, or, or did something to you or about you. Maybe it was an offense by a friend. I want to ask you this morning, what is it that you carry? What scar do you carry? Are you hiding it or is it open for the world to see? Because that scar is a testimony of God's goodness. That scar is a testimony of God's faithfulness. My son called me this morning. I was, as I laid down last night, I, I looked to my wife and I said, Angie, we didn't talk to Ryan today. And it's unusual. Ryan calls us every day. As I mentioned before, you know, when he left back in June or July, he said, I'll never see you again. I'll see you Christmas. It's amazing how much they realize what they miss when they're gone. He calls us every day. And he goes, Dad, don't get a big head or nothing, but I need to ask you a question. I said, okay. He goes, how do I know if I'm called to be a preacher? How do I know if I'm called to be a preacher? Well, Pastor, what, what, how did that even come about? Because my son's been wounded. He's been hurt. He's endured pain. He's endured suffering. He's endured sorrow with the loss of his sister. And it took him to the throne of God that he can hear God's voice. And Rachel's absence from us on this earth is drawing people to the throne room of God. Is bringing salvation to households and families. Is causing people to walk in holiness and to walk for Jesus and, and live in such a way that gives God the glory. And let me tell you, it's worth it all. It's those scars that bear witness of the testimony of Christ. And the Lord told me, what about your scars, Jeff? The world needs to see them because they represent my promise. They represent me. And I walk in that, and I hold on to the Lord, and I trust him. Verse 25, Thomas said to them, unless I see his hands and mark in the mark of his nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. I believe there's people believing today. 
that said, I will never believe. People come to me and come to us and say, I, I don't know how you do it, but your faith has brought me closer to God because I'm bearing the scars of the pain and the sorrow. I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm walking in the presence of God every day and trying to do what he tells me to do. But it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. We have to trust him. You need to trust him with your scars and your pain. And walk in that. And let the world see that your God is greater than your pain. And your God is greater than your hurt and your sorrow. And that you have the victory in Jesus' name. Scars aren't meant to be hidden. Scars aren't meant to be hidden. The world needs to see Jesus through me. The world needs to see Jesus through you. And hear of the goodness of God in the midst of calamity, in the midst of failure. I know Christians today who have morally failed, pastors who have failed morally. You know who their greatest enemy became? The church. COVID has driven more ministers and churches to close and to fall into sin because many of those pastors, they built their life upon a church and a congregation and not upon, not upon the rock of Christ. My heart, my desire, this church is full every week. Full of people ready to worship and hungry for God. But my calling isn't based on how many people come to church. It's based on the obedience that God said to be here. I know that to be a fact because I preached to one or two people for six to eight weeks. I could have just said, and, and even people in my circle, my inner circle said, why do you even do it on Sunday nights? Why do you even do this? Is doing, you know, why? Because I do it for him. And we've seen ministers fall and Christians fall and you know, many times the seat next to you, the person that used to sit there, you know, they, they, they may not be, they, they may have fallen away from God through all this. And like I said, the, 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 the enemy is the church so many times because we have a hard time forgiving them and welcoming them and letting the Lord heal them. We just go on like nothing's ever happened. I recently was reading about, and I, knew, I know this minister from 10 years ago, and I was reading his testimony, and of course he lost his church, he lost everything. But guess what? He's building his life again on Christ. He was a big, big name guy. If I said his name, you'd probably know who it was. But he's building his life again on Christ, and he doesn't care what people think or what people say. He's, he's admitted his sin, he's admitted his grotesque things that he did, and now he's saying, I'm a new person, I'm walking with Jesus. What's he doing there? He's bearing his scars for the world and the church to see, and he knows the one that matters is Jesus. The one that stood before Thomas was Jesus. It wasn't the disciples. It was Jesus who looked for him. And Jesus is looking for some of you today to be honest. Quit living in sin. Quit compromising. Quit it. God called you to walk in his holiness to be the husband of one wife or one husband. To be the wife of one husband. He called you to be pure in your thoughts and your mind. He called, he called you to watch what goes in your ears and your eyes. And you can do it. Quit hiding your scars and let the Lord reveal and heal you. Scars aren't meant to be hidden. There's power in our testimony. Amen? There's power in our testimony. As I said, Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Do not. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him. What did he say? My Lord and my God. Five words. My Lord and my God. 
what he was saying was, you are the one who you say you are. You are alive. Yet you bear the scars of your hurt and of your pain. Jesus didn't hide those scars. And I'm telling you, church, today, we need to put our scars on display for the world to see just how great your God is. He needs to see just how amazing your God is. To some, now this, is, this is important, to some people, the very existence of the King of kings and Lord of lords, the very existence of Jesus, the Messiah, will be made known by the scars that you reveal. That's when they're going to see how faithful God is. Jesus will be known through our pain. That's hard to believe, Sharon. Jesus will be known through your pain. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. I miss him. I miss her. I miss. I, I do understand. Oh, believe me, I do. I do. But I don't want to miss my relationship with God because of that. God wants to move upon his church and move upon you. He's calling the church to walk in transparency in his anointing and to come clean and to, and to say, Lord, all those things I've been trying to hide, you know, either be a Christian or not be a Christian, right? I mean, come on. You are what he made you to be. Somebody this week was sharing with me about a person in their life they care deeply about who's making bad decisions, doing things they shouldn't do. And my comment to this person was, God doesn't play. God doesn't play. As a child of God, reckoning is coming. Oh, that's not the God. Yeah, 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 it is. Because he loves you that much. Your castle's going to fall. The wall's going to crumble. And everybody's going to see everything about you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to run away or run to him? I was that person. And I had to make a decision. And I remember the, the time, the hour, when it was that God spoke to me. Some of you have some future plans that are not God's plans. Listen to me. You've made plans that is not God's will and God's plan for your life. And you already know it. You need to reverse the course and go back to the altar and say, God, I'm going to do what you called me to do. I'm going to be obedient to what you said for me to do. Because your scars are the things that are going to lead people to Christ. What God has brought you through is going to help bring others through it. Jesus will be known through our pain. And I'm learning that God takes the pain and turns it into healing. Woo, glory. God takes the pain and turns it into healing. I'm not going to lose sight of that. I want to close this morning with a story of a man named Sorrow. What kind of name is that, Pastor? You might know him as Jabez. His name means sorrow. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 through 10, read the first part of this. Jabez was more honorable than his brother's. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez was known as the one who causes sorrow. It wasn't uncommon in the, in the time for, for, for mothers to, and fathers to name their children based on what was, they were feeling or the emotion or what they were going through. And this, this mother chose to name her son Sorrow. Now, understand, people knew what that name meant. And him growing up and going to school and playing 
you know, oh, that's the one that caused his family so much pain. See, that's where labels begin to start. And, and, and so he, he's living with this and, hey, hey, that's, that's, that's the one that caused her pain. And, and, and so it goes on, and, and, and so the story goes on where he's growing up with his family, friends. They knew what he represented. Everywhere he went, his job, his sorrow is who he was. You know, life hurts. Amen? Life stinks at times. But I can stand before you with confidence this morning, knowing that God is using my pain and sorrow for his good. For I know who I am in Christ. I know who he is in me. When Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Now I want you to know something that God did not say, oh, I cannot do that because you cause everyone so much pain. There's some of you feeling that today, that your life is, your life is over because you hurt people. You said things, things have happened to you. You've caused, you know, you, you, you've already come up with a nickname over your life, you know, Maybe it's shame, maybe it's guilt, maybe it's failure. Maybe it's ugly. Someone's given you a label. But God's telling you today, no, 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 no. Look what Jabez says here. Cried out to God, oh, let you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so I will be free from pain. Interesting enough that he was taking on some of his namesake. Well, Pastor, what do you mean? I, what I mean is the scars that you've happened, the wounds that happened in your life, if, if we're not careful, those very wounds and scars can last you till you die. You will carry them with you. And your children will carry them with them. Come on. The Bible speaks of generational curses. I don't believe in that per se because I believe Christ can break it right now. But I'm telling you right now, there's some people who continue to complain, continue to live in their father's or mother's footsteps. When God says, you are not your mother, you are not your father. You belong to me. And people need to see the faithfulness of God. That you have the identity of Christ in your life. And your name is not sorrow, your name is not pain, but God has given you a new name, and you are to walk in that victory that he's called you to walk in. Jake Jabez cries out to God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. What, what do you say? He, he, he said, God, get, give me a new name. Free me from pain. That's not who I am. Now I'm looking at you today. I'm saying, God, my name is not failure. My name is not loss. My name is not despair. My name, my name is a name that you have called me overcomer, victorious one. I am the head and not the tail. Can somebody say amen? And I am not going to let the past dictate my future. But I have scars. You want to see them? You're seeing them today. And I'm going to bear them to the world. That the world can see in the midst of everything I've been through and what you may be going through. That God has shown us the victory and God is there. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to have my wife come to the keyboard right now. Come on up here, hon. We're going to worship the Lord today. And I want to encourage you today as I close this, this message. The Bible says in, in the latter part of this verse, and God granted his request. What did he have to do? Put his hand in, the, in, the, in his hand and put his hand in his side. He said, God, I'm going to touch you today. Some of you need to touch heaven today. Ask the Lord to remove that from your life. Remove that guilt, remove that shame, remove all that from your life right now. And just like he did for Jabez, whose name meant sorrow, God's going to give you a new name. He's going to remove it. And God will answer your prayer. Jabez, follow the Lord. I'm going to follow the Lord. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Some of us need to make some radical changes in our households. You need to make some radical changes. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord.
Next cold front comes around. Build you a little fire out back. And start burning some stuff. Some of you are holding on to some stuff. You might need to call the fire department and get a permit first, but you got a lot of stuff to burn. Because it's not part of you anymore. Again, Revelation 12, 11, and they were, they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their what? Testimony. Satan knows, remember? Satan knows the supernatural power that's behind each and every one of our scars. It is because of his knowledge of those, that power that we will destroy him when we reveal him to the world what God has done. Look what the Lord has done. Amen? Look what the Lord has done. God is able to turn around the pain and the scars left from our past and use it to lead others to the promise. And that's our prayer today. I want you to bow your heads with me as we get ready to worship the Lord. God's calling some of you to transparency today. He wants you today to leave some of that at this altar today. Maybe you're here watching online. You've never given your life to Christ today. Today's the day that God wants to turn your pain into promise. God wants to turn your pain into promise. There's a reason for our scars. As I pray this morning, I want to invite you if you're ready to turn your pain into promise, if you're ready to disclose those scars and the testimony behind them to the world that pipe people can be saved, I want you to stand on your feet and say, Pastor, I'm ready to be transparent, to be honest. I'm ready to walk in victory. I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to be the, the light to those who are looking for light. Hallelujah. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I thank you today that, God, you are using our pain for the promise. And, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name right now that those in this congregation today, maybe there's some here today that they've been hiding behind a lie. Lord, let today, let them see the hand of God upon their life and their pain. And let them walk in the victory, revealing those scars. And, Lord, we just give you praise right now. We thank you, Father. As we sing this song, I want to invite you to the altar. Maybe, maybe for a loved one. But today, you can leave here free. Amen? Free. Because you turned your pain into a promise. Hallelujah. Let's worship today.
Yes, yes, Lord. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. Yes, Son. Yes, Father. Father, right now, I just thank you for speaking to me this week, Lord, and thank you for speaking to your church today. Thank you for the unexpected at times, Lord God, showing us, calling our name. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are turning our pain into promise. And Lord, I just pray, Father, right now, that the anointing would go from us in this place today, that we would walk in the victory as overcomers to show the world that, Jesus, you're alive because you've been faithful once again in everything we've been through. And, Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, they all said amen and amen. Six o'clock tonight, we'll be here ministering. If you make it out at six, Love to see you. If not, see you online. Amen. Shake some hands before you go. God bless you and have a glorious day. And remember, invite somebody to church next Sunday morning. Amen. Invite them to church. Every service. Bring somebody with you. For God says, love your neighbor. Amen. If you love them, you're going to feed them. Praise the Lord. God bless. There's nothing better than you. That